there's three reasons why you suffer and one is well, look at you and the way you're built, it's inevitable there's not very much of you and there's a lot of everything else and so you just don't last that long and you're fragile across multiple domains and then you're harshly treated by society and there's no doubt about that and then there's responsibility that can be laid at your own feet well the existential take on that and the thing that all these diverse people that we've been talking about including Viktor Frankl and including Alexander Solzhenitsyn as well as um, uh, Kierkegaard, and Nietzsche and Dostoevsky and the people that I've already talked to you about is that the proper pathway through that is to adopt the mode of authentic being and that is something like refusing to participate in the lie in deception and the lie to orient your speech as much as you can towards the truth and to take responsibility for your own life and perhaps also for the lives of other people and there's something about that that's meaningful and responsible and noble but also serves to mitigate the very suffering that produces, say, the nihilism or the flee into the arms of, flee, uh, or, or, the, or the escape into the arms of totalitarians to begin with well, it's more than that too, because, and this is what I'll close with, and this is why I wanted to introduce Solzhenitsyn's writings to you, you see because it isn't merely that your fate depends on whether or not you get your act together and to what degree you decide that you're going to live out your own genuine being it isn't only your fate it's the fate of everyone that you're networked with and so you know you think well there's nine billion seven billion people in the world we're going to peak at about nine billion by the way and then it'll decline rapidly but seven billion people in the world and who are you you're just one little dust moat among that seven billion and so it really doesn't matter what you do or don't do but that's simply not the case it's the wrong model because you're at the center of a network you're a node in a network of course that's even more true now that we have social media you'll, you, you'll know a thousand people at least over the course of your life and they'll know a thousand people each and that puts you one person away from a million and two persons away from a billion and so that's how you're connected and the things you do they're like dropping a stone in a pond the ripples move outward and they affect things in ways that you can't fully comprehend and it means that the things that you do and that you don't do are far more important than you think and so if you act that way, of course, the terror of realizing that is that it actually starts to matter what you do and you might say, well, that's better than living a meaningless existence it's better for it to matter but I mean, if you really asked yourself, would you be so sure if you had the choice I can live with no responsibility whatsoever the price I pay is that nothing matters or I can reverse it and everything matters but I have to take the responsibility that's associated with that it's not so obvious to me that people would take the meaningful path now when you say, well, nihilists suffer dreadfully because there's no meaning in their life and they still suffer yeah, but the advantage is they have no responsibility so that's the payoff and I actually think that's the motivation say, well, I can't help being nihilistic all my belief systems have collapsed it's like, yeah, maybe maybe you've just allowed them to collapse because it's a hell of a lot easier than acting them out and the price you pay is some meaningless suffering but you can always whine about that and people will feel sorry for you and you have the option of taking the pathway of the martyr so that's a pretty good deal all things considered especially when the, when the alternative is to bear your burden properly and to live forthrightly in the world well, what Solzhenitsyn figured out and so many people in the 20th century it's not just him even though he's the best example is that if you live a pathological life you pathologize your society and if enough people do that, then it's hell really really and you can read the Gulag Archipelago if you have the fortitude to do that and you'll see exactly what hell is like and then you can decide if that's a place you'd like to visit or even more importantly, if it's a, light, if it's a place you'd like to visit and take all your family and friends because that's what happened in the 20th century